Well, good morning. How are you this morning? Happy to be here, blessed. Yes, amen. Well, it's still New Year, right? So we can officially say Happy New Year. We're still in the new year. We're in the month of January. So I want to encourage you uh, with our new year. Now, in the first, um, our, our first meeting this morning, when you were all asleep and I was here, <laughs> I shared about, uh, that's for the early folks, you know, 8.30, it's quite early, uh, about a new year and how I love a new year. I love a new year because it represents so much. It represents hope, it represents new beginnings, uh, which is wonderful because we all need new beginnings, right? As the Apostle Paul said that forgetting what is behind, we press on toward what is ahead, yes? And I think I'm not alone here today to say I've made my fair share of oops and mistakes and all of those things that God has graciously forgiven and forgives, and we get to press on. In fact, I named my uh, show A New Day because I love a new day. Just ask my husband. I have a very special room in the front of our house where the sun comes in, and I love having my morning devotions there. I love that time where the sun is coming in through the blinds, and I get to have that, that intimate time with Christ first thing in the morning, spending time in his word, and just being reminded, yay, to do it. today is a new day. I get to do this again. Even if I blew it yesterday, even if I didn't do all the things that I had wanted to do, and uh, yet today is a new day and a new beginning. So, um, I know that's not me. <laughs> I was really kind of freaked out about that. I have my, my uh, phone in my purse, and I'm always scared to death that's going to happen to me. I always think I have it on vibrate, and the next thing I know, there it is going. So I left it back there somewhere, you know, not out here. Anyway, so as I shared in the first, you know, our, our first uh, time together, um, I talked about the blessings and how in a new year, a new, uh, we all set our New Year's res resolutions. Are you a person who does that? You don't have to raise your hand, but I will. I like to do not New Year's resolutions, I like to do goals. I like to set goals for the new year, and they're great, right? We set goals of like, okay, this is my fitness year, I'm gonna lose that 10 or 15 or 20 or mm, pounds, and then we'd go sign up at the gym. Well, people like me, I'm a natural runner and I, I like the gym, but us gym goers don't appreciate the month of January. <laughs> Why do you think? Because we can't get on any of the equipment, because all these people who set their New Year's resolutions have now invaded our gym and our space. Okay, so we just, we encourage each other, okay, February's coming, March is coming, we'll have our space back. Okay, so setting those goals for our health, you know, our well-being is, is very good, and, and we all want to do that. Setting our goals for financial uh, betterment uh, is very good. Our personal goals, all of that is, is so good. Um, but also, our spiritual goals. You know, sitting before the Lord and saying, God, uh, what is it that you would have for me? How can I press forward and beyond in this coming year? What do you have for me in this coming year? Well, we can look at the blessings. We look at all that we have. And I love the analogy, I use this at 8.30, so I'll use it again. Again, my glass is not half full or half empty, but stay with me, okay? You hear about the, the uh, little example of how do you see a glass? Do you see it half full or do you see it half empty? I like to see the glass half full. I like to see it for what we have in our life, what God has given us, right? God has blessed us. He's given us so many blessings. Um, we could all look at what we don't have, but I encourage people to look at what they do have. What has God given us? Uh, and especially in this new year, as we assess and look at what we have in our lives, we can easily see, my goodness, look around. Uh, we have a wonderful congregation. We have a wonderful community. We have so much. 
and, and we take those things that the Lord has given us and we use them for his purpose, right, in his glory. And we look to him and see, Lord, what blessings in my life, especially for this new year, do I have that you want to use to help my community, to help, you know, my country, my world? How might uh, the things that you have allowed me to have and blessed me with that I can use for uh, the purpose, your purpose? But... We make our plans, we do set our goals, our resolutions, we do our best to honor God with those plans in those New Year's resolutions, right? And, you know, we honor Him with our blessings. But, you know, there is also another side to this that I want to touch on. And actually, you already touched on it through uh, James, uh, as you read in uh, the chapter um, about how blessed we are when we enter into trials, right? And we think, well, how is that a blessing? How is it that we can be blessed? Well, we know that our, it strengthens our patience. You've heard the saying that don't pray for patience because God's going to give you some trials to help you develop those patience. So the Lord, uh, he develops our patience. He, he, he grows us and strengthens us, right, through our trials. But there's another beautiful beautiful thing that happens when we go through trials, when we go through loss and difficulties. And that is that there is the opportunity to reach our communities, to reach other people with the love of Christ. Okay, so that's the opposite side. So sometimes when people are going through difficulty, they look and say, how can this be used? I mean, I was in the land of prosperity, I was in the land of good health, I was in a place where I had so much, and now I've lost this, or I'm going through that, and how can this be used? Well, I'm glad you asked. God wants to, he wants to use all of these things for his purpose, whether it is the blessing or whether it is the trials and the difficulty. We have this thing that we're going along and life happens, okay? Life happens, fill in the blank. Life happens, I went through a divorce. Life happens, I lost a loved one. Life happens, I got that call. Life happens, I got that report from the doctor. So fill in the blank for yourself. What is it for you today that says life happens? Well, I want to share with you and encourage you uh, to look in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Now, this passage has long since been just a, an encouragement for me personally throughout my, my life with Christ. And as I even say the passage right now, you probably think, um, you, you know, of what that passage is, which is, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understandings, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. He will make your path straight. When I graduated from my undergrad degree, my daughters knew I loved that verse, and they had a beautiful tapestry made with that verse on it. Uh, it's just gorgeous, and it's just that, that constant reminder to trust in the Lord. Well, I want to break that down. A moment here with you because there are three words within that passage that are incredible the first one is trust trust in the original language in this passage has the idea or picture of lying helplessly face down so in other words surrender it's the opposite of running or fighting you know, in our autonomic nervous system, we have that. You've heard this fight or flight mode. It's, you know, you get startled, you threat comes to you, and you either rise up and fight or you run. It's actually a way that we survive, right? But as the Christian, as the follower of Christ, the Lord is saying trust in the Lord with all your heart. That means, that word trust means to surrender. Don't run. Don't hide, don't fight. Actually surrender with your face down like, I am in full surrender to you, Lord. The second word I want to point out is acknowledge. 
This means to know God personally. Acknowledge. It's not just acknowledge, yeah, we acknowledge God Almighty, the creator of the heavens and earth, mighty God that we serve, but it has the meaning in the original language here of not just simply acknowledging him as God, but being in fellowship with him, personally in fellowship. That is so precious. So when we are personally in fellowship, like in the early morning for me, yours may be in the afternoon or the evening time, but when you come and you fellowship with him, you're personally connecting. And the last part I want to highlight is make straight. He will clear the obstacles in our way. He will enable us to move forward. So when he makes that promise that he will make straight, he is saying, I will remove the obstacles that are in your way. I will make a way. I will enable you to move forward. So trust in the Lord, face down, fully surrender to God. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And don't lean on your own understandings, but in all your ways, acknowledge in connection, and he will clear the obstacles and make the way for you. Isn't that incredible? And to me, it's letting go of the fears and letting go of running or fighting when those trials come to our life. I want to share a personal, a very personal uh, trial for me and how I have held on and lived and seen God completely fulfill this promise in this passage of Scripture for me. Uh, ten years ago, it will be ten years ago, March, this March, um, my youngest daughter, who had just turned 20 years old, was killed in an automobile accident. And it was sudden. I got the news early in the morning. Uh, the law enforcement, San Bernardino County Sheriff, came to my home um, and gave me this news. Well, I had been out on a run, as I usually do in the mornings, and I came home, and the officers were there waiting for me. Uh, as you can imagine, many of you are parents, grandparents, um, but that kind of news is not the news that any one of us wants to hear. A um, lot of shock and devastation, of course, as you can imagine, uh, and a disbelief as to how I would walk through this. Um, it was really a time that I appreciated that I knew Christ. It is a time, one of the most important times in my life, that I really thanked God that I had this personal relationship with Christ. Um, in fact, the book I have written, Saving Grace, A Journey of Hope and Healing, is about this journey. It is about how God has led me through this journey. But in the introduction to the book, in the very beginning of the book, I write for the reader my own testimony in my own coming to Jesus Christ when I was 19 years old. I did not grow up with the Lord. I did not grow up in a faith home. In fact, my father was an atheist. And yet, as a young child, I know the Lord was tugging on my heart. And at 19 years old, I had that uh, conversion to Christ, and it was an all-or-nothing deal. Okay, it was, I'm living for Jesus, and I fell in love with his word. I just started reading his word, consuming his word. I just couldn't get enough. It was truth. It was life for me, and literally transformed my life from the inside out. And since those many years ago, at 19 years old, I have been running hard after God ever since and trusting him with my life we're going through uh, a divorce many, many, many years ago, not seeing that coming, raising three daughters as a single parent, putting myself through school of two master's degrees and a PhD, um, all of that in trusting. But I tell you this truth, had I not had my eyes upon the Lord 
and really been in fellowship with him, trusting in him, um, I'm not quite sure the outcome after losing my daughter. We can go through trials. We go through uh, little bumps and major mountains. We go through and can go through things that can just take the breath right out of us. But when that day comes, and if that day comes, we want to make sure that we are really grounded and rooted in the Lord and have that intimacy with him and that trust in him with all of our hearts because he promises, and this is the promise, that he will remove the obstacles and he will allow us to go through and move forward. And that is exactly what he did for me uh, when I lost my daughter, Rachel Grace. I was in the middle of my PhD program, actually. I was um, in a clinical psychology program in San Diego, and I was halfway through that when I received this news and began uh, to deal with uh, losing my daughter. Uh, I have two other daughters, and of course, uh, I needed to be present there for them and allow God to minister to their hearts and heal their hearts uh, with me by their side. Um, but we can go through the smallest or biggest trials in our life, and the Lord's promise is still true for us. If we will trust in him with our whole heart and not lean on our own understanding, he will make straight our way. He will open up the ways for us to walk through. So, Going back to what I was saying a moment ago about God using our blessings, using those things, desiring to use what he's given us. If he's blessed us with a car and, gosh, maybe my neighbor doesn't have a way to get to church, wow, I am blessed and I can bring them to church. Uh, calling that individual who's not able to leave their home, uh, maybe they want to be in fellowship here, maybe they want to be a part of the community, but maybe they can't be. I have a telephone, I have a cell phone, I can call them, I can encourage them, I can drive, I can take them a meal, I can minister to them. So looking at our abundance and thanking God for what we have and how we can serve and how we can give is incredible. But on the flip side of that, we also get to serve the same way when we go through the trials and the difficulties of this life. And I don't like that life is uncertain, do you? I don't know very many people do, except for people who like to jump out of airplanes. You know, what do we call those, thrill seekers? A thrill seeker may really enjoy life constantly throwing them curveballs, but they're rare, I, trust me, they are rare. Most people I know, and as a psychologist and working with many patients over the years, most folks enjoy the calm of life, the predictability. They like to know what's coming around that corner. But is that how life works? Yes? No. Never, right? Life is not that. Life is not that. And I will be honest with you. Having three daughters, um, it can be scary, especially three girls, right? Raising three daughters in our world. Um, praying over their lives, praying for them as they were growing up, doing my best as a parent, as many of you here have, raising them in the Lord, teaching them uh, God's word, praying over their lives, praying over them when they go to sleep at night, reading to them the passages of scripture, uh, praying for them. We do our best and we raise our children, but there's always that fear about the what ifs because of life not being predictable. What if this happens? What if that? And over the years, I really had to work hard at trying to dismiss that, you know, and trusting God that he is in control. And again, as I've said, the greatest fear a parent has is that they would lose their child. I've worked with a lot of folks over the years, and I have worked with parents who have lost a child and I tried very hard to put myself in their position, but you really cannot until you yourself have been there. 
And so that most dreadful thing that I could ever imagine happened to me. Um, and I wasn't sure how I would make it through, but as I stated, God's word I have hidden in my heart. And his truth, his word, is everything to me. And I trust him. Did I understand everything? No. Did it make sense to me? Not at all. But I trusted in the God that I serve. I trusted that in blessings and in losses, may God redeem all that I have walked through, all that he has given, or all that I have lost. And so from those early days, I remember asking the Lord, Jesus, please redeem the loss of Rachel's life. Please redeem. And she loved Jesus. She had received Christ when she was young. Her Bible was on her nightstand, left there. And I know, as well as I stand her here, that she is in the presence of God with our Savior. I can't even imagine what she is doing and what she has seen, right? The Lord says he's prepared a place for us. He says that no eye has seen what he has prepared for those who love him, right? So Rachel is in an incredible place, and we look forward one day, I look forward one day to joining her. But even through the struggle, even through all of the questions, I rested in the promise that God knows what this is about. And I put my trust in him, surrendering to him, and asked him, Lord, please, please redeem this. And if that is what we will ask, listen, he will do it. He will do it. If we ask Jesus to take our lives, to take our storms, to take our trials, will it be easy? No. Will you have questions? Yes. But at the end of it, you can know I rest on the promise of God's word. I rest on what he says. And so I surrender to him, which is I trust in the Lord with all my heart. And I don't lean on my own understandings of the would have, could have, should haves, of the regrets, of the, well, why? I don't lean on my own human understanding but I trust in the mighty God who created this universe, who created us, the mighty God who holds everything together in the span of his hand, the mighty God who spoke everything into being, everything, including us, breathed his life into us. That's where I lean. That's where I put my trust. And listen, folks, this morning I want to tell you he has made a way for me. He has cleared the path as he promised he would do. He has removed the obstacles, and he has allowed me to walk through. There is this saying, which is not correct. You have probably heard it, which is that with time, you know, time heals all wounds. No, it doesn't. I've talked to people who have lost a child or a loved one, and it's been many years, and you talk to them, and it was like yesterday. Because we can become stuck in our pain, in our anger, in our angst to understand. And we can spend our years trying to figure it out, leaning on our own understanding. But the Lord says, no, don't lean on your own understanding. Because we're limited with our human capacity. We don't see tomorrow, the next year. We don't see into eternity. Our God in heaven does, so we can trust him. And he has redeemed. He promised, he removed the obstacles, and he has redeemed. My book has come out. I was at a, uh, a memorial service yesterday. I had people coming up to me, thanking me. Oh, I gave this to so-and-so who's lost their child. I gave this to this person. People I don't know. And just hearing how their lives are being encouraged and filled with hope. 
Why do I call it Saving Grace? Well, as we know, God's Saving Grace, but my daughter's middle name was Grace. And why did I say a journey of hope and healing? Because it's a journey, right? It's a journey. We don't just wake up one day and it all happens. It's a journey of hope and healing. And so to hear how God is answering that prayer and redeeming and bringing hope and healing into lives. My husband and I were in the movie theater uh, watching a movie, and we sat down. We're waiting for the previews, and this gentleman was sitting a few seats down and looks at me, and he says, you're that woman. You're that woman. I'm like, oh, no, I'm in trouble. (laughs) You're that woman who wrote that book. I can't believe it. I can hardly wait to tell my wife. Can I take a selfie with you? That was weird. (laughs) Wasn't sure how to feel about that. Um, Then the next day we were in the grocery store and a woman came up, a stranger, and again had uh, had, uh, been blessed. And I say, God, whatever you want to do, allow it to bring hope to many people. And I've spoken. There's been so much that God is doing, and I know that he has yet to do more. So, may I encourage you this morning, may I encourage you to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Surrender to him. Surrender your heart to him. Because you know what? We don't have to fear anything when we do that. Do you know, after I lost my child in experiencing that ultimate trust in God, I was really freed of many fears that I had had. No longer was I afraid because God proved, showed me that I have you. I have you. I've got you. I'm taking care of you. You don't have to be afraid. So as we surrender and don't lean on our own understandings, no matter what is going on in your life today, no matter what you have walked through, no matter what you may be wrestling with in your heart or in your life, with your family, with your loved ones, whatever loss you have had, whatever trials you've walked through or are walking through, surrender, trust in him, and he will make a way. But don't forget to acknowledge God. Don't forget to acknowledge. What does that mean again? That means being in fellowship with him, being in fellowship with him, and watch how he will clear the way for you. Watch how he will remove the obstacles, and for what purpose but for his glory, for his glory and his glory alone. Amen? Amen.